To understand what's going on in Afghanistan and what will be changing in the months ahead, you must travel outside Kabul. Yes, more troops are on the way, but there's so much more to the story. This is eastern Afghanistan, an area where George Bush's war on terror began. American bases now dot the landscape, but on the ground, the military mission is quickly evolving into something very different. In the weeks before Thanksgiving, we were invited to go to forward operating bases in Kunar province. Many are named in honor of soldiers who died here. When you touch down, you immediately realize how the war in Afghanistan is challenging traditional definitions of war. You won't find sprawling tank formations in these mountains. Firefights are frequent, but usually over in a few furious minutes. The military commanders are war tested through multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. But they tend to be a breed apart from generations ago when cigar chomping officers talked of giving the enemy hell. If the United States is to fulfill President Obama's objectives in Afghanistan, it will fall on the shoulders of people like Colonel Randy A. George, a tall, deliberate commander who has become accustomed to talking with the tact of a diplomat. It is a dynamic situation and, and we're dynamically thinking about the problem and assessing it daily, um, understanding where, where we want to go with this and, and the quickest way to move towards that solution. A solution that involves a brand new commitment that's not so much about guns as governing. Building the Afghan government, national and local, so the Americans can go home. At least, that's the plan. When your time is up here, current scheduled call for it to be when? May and June of next, of uh, May, 2010? June. What would be your measure of success? Well, I certainly realize this, it's, you know, it's not a light switch over here where all of a sudden, you know, things are going to go on. And I'm sure every, you know, commander that comes over here would hope that, hey, by the end of his time, things are, are uh, at a certain level. We've already made progress. So if those things are starting to take hold, where people are feeling connected to their government, um, where they're calling on the Afghan um, national security forces to respond to things, um, and those kind of partnerships are happening between the police and the army um, and the border police, um, that's how I think we'll, we'll start to see success, and we're, this, we're already starting to see that. You would face this way. President Obama's critics say creating a functioning Afghan government, army, and police force that will outlast American troops is an impossible task. The main thing you want to remember is when you're taking contact, you all want to get online. But here's what's important. The United States Army says what's happening in eastern Afghanistan is beginning to work. That's one of the reasons the U.S. military is hopeful and why President Obama is sending tens of thousands of new troops to spread what is happening here to other parts of the country. You walk, you're shooting at them, transition, you come over and you shoot at those guys. The idea is to provide just enough security so the Afghan government can have one last chance to succeed. But turning peasants into policemen is a tall order. The stakes here couldn't be higher. Colonel George is responsible for a long stretch of the border with Pakistan, a region where the Taliban and Al-Qaeda continued to operate eight years after September 11th. It is the job of the Afghan Border Patrol to help secure this region. And Colonel George says that while there is progress, like this new modern Border Patrol base, this effort, like everything else here, will take time and lots of patience. Mm -hmm. This is actually the first time I've been out here. They're just, open, they're just opening this up right now. Colonel George is a 21st century soldier, the type of officer who will have to turn Obama's new strategy into a success. He enlisted in the Army out of high school and then went to West Point. He holds master's degrees in economics and international security studies. Before he took command of eastern Afghanistan this spring, he studied the strategy here and settled on a radical experiment that fundamentally shifted the mission. 
For years, the U.S. military stationed troops at remote outposts to protect small areas. Often, these bases, manned by a handful of soldiers, drew Taliban fire and suffered a high rate of casualties. We profiled one such base, Restrepo, in the infamously violent Korangal Valley. The objective at that time was to take it to the enemy, valley by valley, village by village. And that was a strategy that the previous head of U.S. forces in Afghanistan, General David McKiernan, outlined for us a year ago in Kabul. Our strategy is not an urban strategy. This insurgency is rural-based. Uh, it's not in the cities. It's out in the country. It's, it's with, uh, it plays on uh, poverty and, and lots of other variables that exist in rural Afghanistan. But when President Obama took office, McKiernan was sacked, and General Stanley McChrystal was ordered to develop yet another new strategy for success in Afghanistan. Part of that new strategy called for a fundamental change promoted by Colonel George in how troops would be deployed, abandon those remote outposts, and move the soldiers and the effort to population centers. I, I think part of it you got what we're doing is pulling back um, from a lot of the areas we, were, we just weren't seeing the benefit. The U.S. Army calls it realignment. The Taliban propagandists call it a retreat. When people start talking about closures, they think you're giving up terrain, that you're actually you know, falling back or you're losing. And there's a little bit of that when you look at the map. Um, when you actually get out here and you find out that by pulling back out of places, you know, what we're trying to do is get the Afghan government to take um, ownership of a lot of these places by, by pulling back out of, we've actually seen the Afghan government step up into a lot of these places, which is exactly what we want to do. So are you saying, in effect, or not, that, okay, we pulled the American forces out of these areas, even some areas where we lost troops. Um, maybe you're ready to have um, the Afghan government come back in. Well, fine, let us know. And, and, they're, and they're doing that. And I guess the point was it's, it's uh, it, you know, we were, we were an impediment to progress um, by having, you know, our forces that were in there. And, and what we found is by pulling out that impediment, um, and, and we can help connect the uh, Afghan government back to the tribes and the people and the natural leaders that were in that area, that we can help reinforce that. According to American commanders, the colonel's effort to realign his forces ran into resistance from the Afghan government with tragic results. In early July, at the insistence of Afghan President Karzai, U.S. forces were called in to aid Afghan police in the remote town of Barj Matal after it was overrun by insurgents. Despite strong objections by U.S. military commanders, including Colonel George, that Barj Matal was strategically unimportant and should be left to Afghan security forces, the mission turned into a fight that lasted nearly two and a half months and left three American servicemen dead and 39 wounded. Then in October, a small outpost nearby named Keating was nearly overrun, leaving eight Americans dead and 24 wounded. Colonel George had already scheduled Keating for closure at the time of the attack, but delays caused by the operation in Barj Matal left the men there exposed. There were decisions to make right. as part of the realignment yes. to, if you will, pull out of some areas, to put the emphasis on protecting greater population areas, mm -hmm. and in effect putting your assets where they could do, the most, benefit do the most benefit. Now, taking Barj Matal and then Keating, the Taliban will claim this as a victory, mm -hmm. saying, well, we, we attacked the Americans, we killed some Americans, right. we forced them out of there. Recognize from where you sit in uniform, tough question. But if the decision had been yours and yours alone, it seldom is in these kind of situations. Would you have defended either place? Would I have stayed? Is yes, that what you mean? Stayed. No, I wouldn't have changed what we're doing. I would have realigned out of there. Colonel George says he has no second thoughts about removing American troops from sparsely inhabited corners of the country. He says they aren't wanted and that they can be of better use in populated areas. We're here to build the government's capacity and connect the Afghan government to their people. And if, if their infrastructure, the roads, and, and the Afghans aren't completely interested in doing that in these locations, um, then we're not going to do that 
you know, by ourselves. To get Dan Rather reports and other great HDNet programming, call your cable or satellite provider and ask for HDNet.